Uh, ko te wiki o te reo Māori i tēnei wiki, nō reira me mihi atu i te reo rangatira mō te tīmatanga o tēnei kōrero. Ka nui te mihi ki a koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora mai tātou katoa, wāhine mā, rau rangatira mā. Uh, this week is Māori Language Week, so thank you to all of those who have acknowledged that. So I greeted you uh, in the Māori language. Now, Māori language has three greetings. The first tēnā koutou is my ancestors greeting your ancestors. The second tēnā koutou is me greeting you, and the third tēnā koutou is my unborn descendants greeting your unborn descendants. When Māori say hello, we do it over the ages. Kia ora. <laughs> So I thought I might talk about being urban Māori because it is Māori Language Week. Um, as mentioned, my parents brought me to Auckland in 1960. Uh, I was six years old and uh, I did not know where I was going. I left Ahipara. How many here been to Ahipara? Church, church, nice place. Um, horrible place to leave when you're six years old to go to the wastelands of West Auckland where your parents work in a factory all day and you get yourself up at six and make yourself a wheat and go off to school to find out you're the only brown kid at the school. It almost broke me. Um, but one of the things that came out of being part of the urban Māori migration of the post-Second World War generation is that we were amongst those who were the first activists, who uh, marched in the 1970s, who protested, who signed petitions to have the Māori language recognised as an important part of New Zealand society, New Zealand culture. And that has been achieved as much because of the work of urban Māori, the disenfranchised, the factory kids of West Auckland, South Auckland, Porirua and Christchurch, as it has been from the leadership of our tribes. More importantly, it was also people living in urban areas that began the first language nests in the 1970s. Nannies who'd left like I had, our villages and our kainga behind, began small language groups and garages and living rooms that went on to become the Kohanga Reo and then Kura Kaupapa Māori movement. So we are here in this room acknowledging the Māori language because of the contribution made by urban Māori. So I'm immensely proud to be part of that community and to be able to stand here because my parents thought they were protecting me by not teaching me to speak the Māori language because their experiences had been so awful. So I, like many of us, are, are on a journey to learn my language and to learn the truth of my history. You talk about fake news, Māori been dealing with fake news for 175 years. <laughs> Believe me, you learn to cope. <laughs> I want to also just touch on one other thing before I go. I'm really proud of the fact that New Zealand is the first country to have given women uh, the franchise 125 years ago. But I'd also like to remind you that on the day or on the week or during the months that Māori men and Māori women, because there were many Māori women chiefs, on the day we signed that treaty with the British Crown, Māori women lost our rights as Māori people to become British citizens where we were chattels. In the pre-colonial, pre-treaty Māori world, Māori women experienced political, economic power and sexual reproduction power. What does that mean? If you were born in Europe in the 1840s, you were born with the identity of your father and you died the property with the identity of your husband. In the Māori world, my whakapapa goes back 17 generations to the waka and the woman who began that tribe, Kahukura Ariki. I have my identity, I have my sexual reproduction rights and I lost all of those on February the 6th, 1840. So I'd just like to finish by remembering somebody who for me is a shiro, Celia Lashley. She was a rock and roll Sheila that I had the great privilege to listen to speak. And once she said to us, Māori women have been broken by the colonial experience and it is the responsibility of white women to walk alongside Māori women. Not in front of us, telling us what to do, not behind us, prodding us, but alongside us. Because together, we will create the New Zealand we dream about. Kia ora koutou.